Now from Vancouver, a CTV News update. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kate Kodosik. Thank you for joining us. Well, the winter weather has arrived. The mercury has fallen well below zero, and the dump of snow on the weekend has created very slick driving conditions. Over the weekend, drivers at higher elevations faced the worst of the winter conditions. To prepare for this morning's commute, city crews have been salting the roads, and the temperatures are frigid. With the wind chill, it felt like minus 20 last night. Thank you for joining us. Two snowshoers who spent a frigid night on Cypress Bowl are now recovering in hospital. A group of six set out last night but ran into trouble after wandering off the trail. One man got stuck after falling down a steep embankment, reportedly injuring his groin. A female friend stayed behind waiting for rescuers while four others were walked to safety very early this morning. Aside from being extremely cold, all six snowshoers are doing fine. The traffic lights in Vancouver were working again last night, but yesterday's malfunction is raising questions. Was it an act of sabotage or simply a computer error? The left turn lights weren't working and neither were counterflow arrows through the causeway. And as a result, traffic was completely snarled throughout Vancouver. Police are investigating whether the problem is connected to Vancouver's civic strike after an anonymous caller told radio station AM730 the problem would continue until the strike ends. Good morning, I'm Kate Godozik. Two men are dead this morning. Six others have been sent to hospital, one in serious condition. All are victims of an early morning shooting spree in East Vancouver. Let's go live to Dave Lefebvre for more. Dave, what details are police releasing at this hour? Well, at this point, we know that two men were involved in the shooting, and according to one witness statement, the men entered both from the front and the back. One of them was armed with a 40 caliber pistol, the other one with a 9 millimeter pistol. Dave, of course, questions are being asked right now as to whether this was a targeted attack or not. Are police even commenting on that? They did, actually. Uh, first thing they said this morning was that it does appear that this is a targeted attack. They are looking for two suspects, though they aren't giving us any indication as to what these suspects look like. Thank you so much, Dave. Dave Lefebvre, live in East Vancouver for us. Stay with us. Your weather and traffic details are up next. CTV's Kate Godosik joins us now live in Chopper 9 over Lost Lagoon. Kate, what can you tell us? Well, Colleen, this was a dramatic one from both the ground and the air this afternoon, and we're still kind of piecing it together. The details are somewhat unclear, but what I can tell you from witness accounts is that around noon, 1 o'clock, an 82-year-old woman attempting to park her car ended up clipping a car that was already parked on the south side of Georgia Street. Well, then she lost control of her car, and what happened was she went up on the curb, clipped a pedestrian, sending that person to the ground, and then continued on for another 200 meters across a footpath, through the trees, and over the embankment, right into Lost Lagoon. Thank you, Pamela. Yeah, we're about the Delbrook neighborhood on the North Shore, where park rangers tell us a black bear and her two cubs were spotted earlier today. Now, of course, this isn't uncommon for North Shore residents to run into bears and such, but it is a concern. So traps have been set up, and park rangers and conservation officers are thinking now that this isn't going to be a typical catch and release, and they're thinking these bears should just be put down. Now, that's unlike, of course, the grizzly bear that was released earlier after wreaking a bit of havoc in Squamish, and uh, Chopper 9 was there to grab this exclusive footage. Driven 70 miles north of Squamish, the young grizzly named Butterscotch stepped out of his snare looking a little perplexed and a little uncertain of what he was supposed to do. That's when conservation officers put him through a hazing event, firing cracker shells, bean bags, and rubber bullets into the air to condition him to be far from trusting to be fearful of humans. Now that bear season is upon us, we need to see this as a reminder to secure our garbage. Biologists suspect that because of the snowpacks, the young bear wandered into town looking for food. And Pamela, we actually understand that this is the second time this bear has wandered into Squamish, so he's known to conservation officers, and they're really hoping this time that he stays put. Thanks so much, Bill. A spectacular is an understatement. It was an absolute raging inferno this afternoon that sent smoke billowing into the air that could be seen pretty much across the entire city. We could see from the air fire crews really working hard to control it. They were dousing these other sections of the building, just showering them with water to try and deter these flames from spreading. CTV's Kate Godosik joins us now live in Chopper 9 with a bird's eye view and some advice, I hope, Kate. Colleen, my advice, pull out the paddles, pull out the pedals, or hey, hitch a ride with us here in Chopper 9, which a lucky p &E attendee will get to do, of course, during the 6 o'clock news. But in all seriousness, the best bet, the ferries. Chopper 9 is right above the Tawasin Ferry Terminal. I can tell you right now, currently, no sailing weights from either side, meaning Tawasin or Swartz Bay, which is a very, very different picture from what we saw last weekend. These are gale winds today, up to 60 kilometers in some areas, and that's left about 19,000 customers without their power. The hardest hit areas were Coquitlam, 
Pitt Meadows, Langley, Seashelt, and Gibsons. But as hard and heavy as the wind was inland, it was the most heavy out on the open seas. Now, I can tell you that the BC ferries had to cancel a number of sailings because of choppy waters. The high winds kicked up underwater debris. Lumber and logs have been washing up on the shores of English Bay, Third Beach, and Kitts Beach. And Bill, I can tell you something that's quite interesting about the winds today. It's really unique to have them. It's rare that we see them in the middle of summer. So, Bill, when you leave the station today, hang on to that hat of yours. Okay, Kate, thank you. Kate Kadozik and Chopper 9.